Hello, cloud gurus. I'm Matthias Anderson, bringing you another episode of GCP This Month. This month's episode is jam-packed with the announcements that Google made both leading up to and at Cloud Next 2019 UK, held at the Excel Center in London. Our GCP instructor, Tim Barry, was on scene. Did you maybe see him there? And I'll dive into some of his highlights in our GCP Gems segment later on in the episode, including Cloud Run now being generally available and the slick new Network Intelligence Center. After that, we'll of course celebrate our Guru of the Month. We have a bazillion things to run down in our Quick Bite segment, so let's just jump right in. Okay, we have a ton of things to cover, so I'm gonna move quickly here. Let's start with a very far-reaching announcement. GCP will soon be expanding to five more brand new regions, in particular in South Korea, Indonesia, Poland, and two more locations in the United States, those being Salt Lake City and Las Vegas. This adds to the already 20 GCP regions that are up and running around the world. Now globally available in all of those regions, you can bring your own IP addresses to Google Cloud. So even if your organization is already invested in your own IP addresses, this can let you migrate to and take advantage of GCP. Now, if you're still saddled with some inflexible hardware tied licenses, you may be interested to hear that Google now offers a bare metal solution. This can let you bring those workloads under the Google Cloud umbrella for billing, support, and low latency connections to GCP services. Now, I will point out that these are not exactly on-demand instances with per second billing, but hey, neither are your Oracle licenses, right? Next, let's take a look at a bunch of GCP products and features that became generally available this month. We have App Engine Standard, now supporting Java 11, Cloud Dataflow's Python SDK now supports both Python version 3 and streaming, Cloud Dataflow Flexible Resource Scheduling uses Dataflow Shuffle and Preemptible Instances to greatly reduce the cost of batch jobs that are not so time sensitive, Cloud Dataproc now includes auto-scaling for even more managed Spark and Hadoop jobs. GKE Usage Metering lets centralized infrastructure teams monitor the usage of their GKE clusters by namespace and label so they can track down waste. Migrate for Anthos lets you convert physical or virtual machines into containers running in Anthos or GKE. AutoML Translation and Advanced Translation API now give you much more flexible control over the language translations that your system may need. Contact Center AI has virtual agents that can both replace live call center agents for simple calls and assist them with the harder calls by transcribing them and offering suggestions to the live agent. Identity Platform Multi-Tenancy means that you can now use just one instance of Identity Platform to manage multiple separate groups of users for your own system. Apigee Hybrid lets you leverage Apigee's Enterprise Class API management even when some parts of your API are hosted in your own data centers. Cloud Data Fusion lets you build ETL pipelines by just visually dragging and dropping stuff together. And last but not least, Cloud Run is now GA! But we'll dig into that in our GCP Gems segment. Okay, lots of great new stuff is now available in beta too. It may not come with an SLA, but Google still has a pretty high standard for beta products. Let's run down that list. Stack driver monitoring is now being fully integrated into the main Google Cloud Console, yay! Cloud Armor now includes a web application firewall, a WAF, so you can apply rules to mitigate all sorts of security threats. And this also integrates with Cloud SCC, the security command center. Google's fully managed Cloud SQL product now supports Microsoft SQL Server databases too. You get high availability, automatic backups, automatic storage scaling, and more. BigQuery now supports scripting and stored procedures, so you can do all sorts of custom processing beyond just pure SQL, and share that code via the dataset, all at no extra cost. TensorFlow Enterprise is Google's new white glove AI service to ease enterprise concerns around support, including security patches, bug fixes, and assistance with AI challenges. It's free as long as you spend a ton of money on AI in GCP. Explainable AI offers us humans some insight into why certain machine learning models make the predictions they do. In particular, this is now available for AutoML tables and AI platform predictions. Batch, not Cloud Batch, mind you, just Batch, is a new GCP product to schedule and manage batch workloads on GKE clusters. This includes auto scaling the cluster up and down for you. Stackdriver Logging's new log router lets you control which logs should get sent where, like to cloud storage or BigQuery or external systems like Splunk via Cloud PubSub. It also supports customer managed encryption keys. Packet mirroring built into the VPC itself lets your security systems inspect network traffic without having to actually intercept and resend all of it. SLO Service API lets you set service level objectives on container or VM environments to centrally manage customer oriented service health. 
Coming soon to beta, the new external key manager lets you store and manage encryption keys outside of Google Cloud, all while still letting you use the Cloud KMS APIs and IAM integration. And you can combine this with the new key access justifications feature to both see why a key is being used and to have the opportunity to deny it. Whew, that was a lot. Let's move on to the GCP gems. First up, we have the Network Intelligence Center, which gives you strong information about your global network setup, both for ensuring connectivity and tracking topology history. The topology section includes a traffic breakdown to make it really clear what sources of global traffic are being routed to which of your globally distributed GCP resources. This kind of visibility can surface problems that you'd likely never have realized otherwise, when traffic is moving to different places than you expected. Fixing issues like this can both save you money and significantly boost your system performance. Oh yeah, and this also tracks the topology over time too, so you can compare what you're seeing now to how it used to be. The connectivity test section lets you define connection source destination pairs and shows a hop by hop trace of traffic progress. Kind of like a trace route, but also integrated with VPC features that trace route might not otherwise see. And it does this in a visual display that not only breaks down what has affected that hop, it also links you directly to those settings in the GCP console, such as the specific firewall rule. Tim added, I have a friend who just spent a month with a customer building a mesh of connectivity test VMs. They could replace the entire fleet with this. The Network Intelligence Center was introduced and demoed in the Day 2 keynote, so check out our straight to the time code link if you want to see that for yourself. Finally, we have my very favorite announcement of the month, Cloud Run is now generally available. Now this is not my favorite announcement because of all the course updates I'm going to have to make, but it is because this product is innovative and, well, awesome. It doesn't take a long time talking with me to figure out that I am a huge fan of serverless. Pretty much all of us at A-Cloud Guru are, really. But Cloud Run is conceptually similar to FAS functions as a service, but it offers a different set of trade-offs than all of the serverless technologies we've had in the past. Now, just like Cloud Functions or Lambda, this has the same 100 millisecond billing granularity and it scales right down to zero when it's not in use. But instead of taking just a bunch of code and running it in isolated function instances per event, Cloud Run lets you give it any container image, just like you might run in Docker or GKE, and then has each container instance that it creates handle the number of simultaneous requests that you choose. If you want, and you do want if your code is not re-entrant, then you can limit it to one and have no concurrency, just like Cloud Functions or Lambda. But maybe your handler has some periods of idle, and it makes sense for it to handle dozens of requests at the same time, because it's much cheaper, right? Just change the concurrency setting and let Cloud Run manage absolutely everything about infrastructure and scaling, a truly serverless offering. Because Cloud Run is container-based, you can package up whatever runtimes you want in there. And because it's based on Knative, you could run your own version of it on any Kubernetes cluster anywhere, even other clouds. No lock-in. And I guess now's a good time to also mention that Cloud Run for Anthos is also GA, meaning that you don't even have to run Knative yourself if you manage those Kubernetes clusters through Anthos. Anyway, Tim Barry caught the what's new at serverless compute session at Cloud Next, and I think his series of tweets of the live demo really show you what's going on here. He wrote, from zero to 10,000 instances in under 10 seconds on Cloud Run. And then now doubling the number of requests handled in roughly the same number of instances with concurrency. Finally, and straight back down to zero as soon as the load tester terminates. Now let me see the infrastructure you manage do that. Well, on to our guru of the month. This month's winner is Petri Oyala, a lead cloud architect from Helsinki, Finland. Congratulations, Petri. We'll be sending you a swag pack, including a t-shirt, some stickers, and a hand-signed card. Everyone else, make sure you check out this month's new question available at the link below. Now, one last thing before I let you go, you should right now go and block off your calendar for Google Cloud Next 2020 in San Francisco, happening April 6th, 7th, and 8th next year. I hope to see you there in person, and maybe we'll also meet at another event before then or online. Well, tune in next month for another episode of GCP This Month. And until then, keep being awesome, cloud gurus.